Watch it, and welcome to Said Serio, and the sixth episode of Designing and Building an Electric Guitar. In this episode, I'll continue building the neck for the guitar. In the previous episode, I painstakingly flattened and squared up a nice piece of flame sycamore to create the neck blank, and then cut a scarf joint to create the angled back headstock. There are a lot of tasks involved in creating a functioning guitar neck, and doing them in a sensible order is key to it all working properly. The first thing I took care of was making accurate templates for both the taper of the neck and the headstock. For the taper template, I wanted to work more accurately than cutting to hand-drawn lines, as I could imagine deviation from the proper dimensions easily creeping in if I was just cutting up to a line. To get around this, I devised a method of using my digital calipers and some pins, which were, which were a known width of 1.5 millimeters. By spacing these pins out to the exact correct width at the nut end and the body end of the neck, whilst making sure that they were at right angles to the center line, I could then offer these pins up against a straight edge to route the neck taper accurately. For the headstock template, I wasn't quite so precise. I used the corner edge of a sheet of MDF, which I double checked for squareness. I transferred the shape from a printout onto this and then carefully sanded and cut this to shape. I then copied this template to a thicker piece of MDF and applied MDF sealer to both of the templates to harden them up for use with a bearing guided router bit. Copying the headstock piece once again showed me to treat the router table with respect and to think of a more appropriate way to hold the small headstock shaped piece of MDF. Making accurate templates has been a key part of my work so far as copying a shape with the router mounted to a table is fairly straightforward even if it is a little nerve wracking. My next task was a little more stressful, and that was routing the channel for the truss rod. A truss rod is usually an adjustable steel bar running down the middle of a guitar's neck, whose job it is to counteract the pull from the tension of the strings. The truss rod I have chosen allows adjustments in two directions, which allows adjusting the neck if it develops either a concave or a convex bow. I marked up the neck to indicate roughly where the taper should be and to accurately mark the center line where the truss rod channel should be. I'm using a six millimeter spiral cutting bit here, which exactly matches the width of the truss rod. I use the fence of the router to ensure I'll be cutting dead center of where the neck will eventually be. It was important to do this step whilst the neck blank was still square before the neck taper was cut or I would need to make a jig of some sort to make sure I was routing down the middle of the neck. I taped a 15 degree off cut of MDF onto the headstock area to support the router as it got to the headstock end, otherwise the router would tend to wobble a little bit here. The channel was cut in several passes until I reached the correct depth. Next, I enlarged the channel towards the nut end of the neck with um, chisels to accommodate the slightly larger portion of the truss rod. Finally, a leap of faith that I didn't dare film a free-handed drill to create the access hole for the truss rod and to join it with the truss rod channel. Thankfully, the truss rod fits into this channel pretty nice and snug. Unfortunately, I got a bit cack-handed 
and the thin ledge of wood that I've left to support the nut has definitely got a little crack running through it. I will run some thin CA glue into this to harden it up and then flatten it back down. The headstock is going to have a thin veneer on top of it, which is mostly a decorative thing, but it will also butt up against the nut to help keep it in place. I am a bit of a nostalgic guy, so the wood for this veneer is a piece of silver birch from a tree in my parents' garden that I grew up with. This tree had to be taken down a couple of years ago, but I made sure I took a couple of logs from it. There is a great science to properly drying wood, and I didn't know any of it, so the logs I have have not been dried properly. This means that the wood I'm using here is very liable to have large cracks and splits. After hand sawing up a few pieces of this wood and overtaxing my bandsaw to the extreme to resaw them, I ended up with a couple of candidates for the veneer. I took these close to the required depth using the router. There is a small crack in this piece that I've chosen to use, and again I will fill this crack with thin CA glue to harden it up and hopefully prevent the crack from spreading. This wood does bring some strength to the headstock, but it's not entirely structural so it should be up to the job. The piece of laburnum I'm using for the fretboard was not supplied as a handy square and flat piece, but rather it already had a rough taper and also had a little knot right on the edge. Many people pre-cut the slots to receive frets and shape the fretboard to the neck taper before gluing it in place to the neck. But as my fretboard piece was all already in an awkward shape, I've decided to glue it to the neck before, whilst using the tape of the neck as a router guide to trim the fretboard to shape. I will also cut the fret slots once the fretboard is glued onto the neck. Since the neck will be nice and flat still at this point, it should give me a nice solid base and reduce the amount that the, the fretboard wants to flex whilst the slots are sawed. Firstly though, I sanded and then used the router to take the fretboard to the required depth. I haven't captured it very well here, but this dull looking piece of wood really came alive when some material had been removed. It looks absolutely stunning in real life. I will stop talking at this point and show you the process I went through to glue the neck together as one piece and shape it.
I didn't film the process of putting the radius on the fretboard, but many thanks to my uncle, who kindly 3D printed two radius blocks of differing radius, which allowed me to put a compound radius onto the fretboard with a router. That's it for this instalment. Next time I hope to show you some fretwork on the neck and maybe some further prep for the body. Take care.